so for me like if if i am if i am looking at sre as a role right so these are the like six things which i which is make or break for me in an interview okay or like in a current interview like if i if i go into these six things is something which i what an sre engineer should know let's dive into interview preparation strategy you have been you have switched a series of companies and you have been also involved a lot in hiring yeah. multiple interviewers and interviews of like candidates basically at mm-hmm. mo engage at skyflow building initial first set of engineers and teams around you so so yeah so you you are the perfect person to actually what do we companies expect in mm-hmm. sri interview roles and how should someone go about it so let's just break it down into two parts one part is uh, probably for people who are learning in learning phase in preparation phase uh, what all things they should go through and all and then finally we will at the end cover specific interview preparation probably someone for experienced professionals switching their jobs and all sure sure so uh, yeah so say like as i said like we will cover these two section so what i'll i'll do first is like i'll, I'll just cover up the topics and everything which an sre engineer should know right mm. and then then we can like probably uh, dive in like what of what all of these are important for someone who is like basically making the first switch or someone who is uh, like fairly advanced see like uh, just to explain stuff what i've done is like we have a sort of a mind map okay, which which we'd be going through in order to cover like what all topics do we have and this is a fairly top level mind map right so you don't need to dive into the 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 exact stuff here so I'll, what i'll do is like i'll cover up the main topics and probably i can i can send you a set of resources which which you can uh, uh, give the viewers yeah so so uh, let let's start with the basics here right so for me like if if i'm if i'm looking at sre as a role right so these are the like six things which i which is make or break for me in an interview okay or like in a current interview like if i if i go into these six things is something which i what an sre engineer should know okay so so what you what you notice uh, here is that it is quite different from how a back end engineer would approach right so a back end engineer would typically have three rounds or three three set of rounds right and you will go, go very deep into each right like so if if there is a dsa round so it will go and cover every uh, inch of dsa right mm. but for sre it's more important to cover the breadth instead of the depth okay for of stuff so mm. that is I I've, I've tried categorizing it in six round uh, six things which according to me define the breadth of an SRE engineer mm-hmm. okay so yeah so so let's start with the networking stuff okay so on the net when you this into six categories are these general interview rounds or these are like topics which are covered across interview rounds okay so see like uh, for an sre interview so it completely depends on the company like what kind of hiring they are doing because sre is not a role which you hire freshers into right mm. so mm. what would happen is that because you are an experienced professional and they are kind of expecting certain solutions from your end right mm. so what they'll do is ki they'll try focusing on three or four of these rounds okay, okay. Mm. what would happen is like a company who is very heavy in networking okay would probably have networking os and cloud provider around and script uh, skip the uh, scripting and containers around okay a, a company who is deciding to uh, kind of move into kubernetes okay they, they would do the containers and cloud providers around more and then skip the script uh, scripting and operating systems around right mm. similarly like when i was going into uh, moving edge right they wanted more exposure on the tool side of thing because i was trying to solve their monitoring side so they will, they would cover more on uh, tools cloud providers and containers so mm-hmm. out of these six what i what i would say is that almost everything uh, is is kind of mandatory and and is kind of uh, uh, irrelevant for a certain company right mm-hmm. but one when on preparation you will have to yes. sort of cover all these 
topics to so, so like what what i'd say is that once you are experienced enough in sre or like even if you want to get started uh, as an sre right these six things is the basic stuff which you should know right okay. and like once you grow into an sre role you'll kind of be developing a, a depth in each instead of like adding in more topics here hmm. so yeah sre and devops roles basically have uh, coding rounds programming data such as just like a software developers or it's completely so, so here see like for uh, like if they are hiring junior sres right Hmm. so for junior sres they'll be focusing on this part okay so here is where the like where the python go scripting is the part where they'll cover up the dsa uh, section okay hmm. they expect that you know how to script not how to write efficient code okay because you are solving for problems okay so there there would be a part which would involve writing efficient code okay yeah. but that would come uh, as a secondary priority to something like solving something on the go right so it would mostly be in involving the scripting stuff and and yeah so dsa is not the primary uh, concern here so if you are asking for one topic right which is very important for any sre for me it would be cloud providers because yeah. this would be like this would be covered in every company which you are uh, interviewing for be yeah. it an sre role or a devops role right mm. so for me like if if you are asking for a dsa equivalent that would be cloud providers for me okay yeah. understood so so yeah so i'll just walk you through uh, it one by one okay and then i'll i'll give a quick walk through just to uh, so that we can just cover the topics which i'm mentioning here right so if if you are starting with networking okay so these are for companies who are network oriented uh, like for example a company like skyflow who acts as a a uh, database for a lot of companies would have a lot of networking issues right because mm -hmm. it, it is continuous in out uh, uh, from their servers right mm -hmm. so, so most of these companies would have a networking round okay and then it it would mostly cover like you knowing all the kind of protocols that are that are there right then you you kind of knowing how web servers work so if if you see like one of the main web servers which you should know is nginx okay like this is the primary web server which is used in almost like 80 to 90% of the companies uh, which we have uh, uh, like especially in all the startups okay mm -hmm. so need to cover nginx and web servers as a concept and then the osi model so i am sure that you are also familiar with uh, the osi model you being an embedded engineer but osi model is is something like you which is networking one on one mm -hmm. right you are covering networking you have to make sure that you know the osi model inside out so for me like even as an interviewer if i am evaluating networking i would mostly stick to these three concepts okay mm. try to evaluate the person on these three right mm. so so coming down let's come to the scripting scripting side okay. so for for the scripting part of things right so mm. it's either you learn shell scripting either you learn python or go scripting okay so it's not mandatory to like know any of like both of these right so shell scripting again like this is something which is slowly dying down okay so like what i'd recommend most of the viewers here is to go with python and go scripting because that is where you can cover up a lot of stuff and you can like do lot more than shell scripting and it's much easier to maintain as code right mm -hmm. so Uh, so yeah on the scripting stuff you would mostly be evaluated on python go scripting and this is a good check box to fill right like this is uh, something which if you are good at this would be very helpful when you are uh, working as an sre or in devops engineer because you can take up a lot of other side projects mm -hmm. okay so so this is where your minor dsa would come in okay so you will not go to the advanced stuff like you will not be going into uh, uh, db or graphs if you if you are uh, learning scripting uh, for an sre role if they they'll stick to like the basic stuff right like array linked list so uh, even for even for like fan top companies also this is the so, so even even for fan top companies i'm sure that you will not be get, uh, getting a, a a a very hard or a lead code hard dp problem in a scripting role hmm. okay 
so yeah like, like what we can do is like you could just cover up the basic stuff here uh, when when you are trying to cover up scripting hmm. so coming to operating systems so operating system see like there might be a lot of operating systems but i am guessing that everything almost runs uh, runs on linux right now right so again like you you would add to this but uh, linux is something like is the is the only operating system which i'd recommend people to uh, learn right now because even the servers are moving away from all the windows servers to linux now mm -hmm. right so so in linux right so these are probably the six topics which you should uh, cover up so mm -hmm. So the the above four right are our typical OS topics, right? Mm. Like how processes managed, how threads work, how memory and storage is work, how how do how does file management work? But mm. the last two parts here, right? Like service management and startup management. So mm. this is something which is specific to SRE and DevOps preparation, right? So because what you do is keep when you are deploying a part of code, right? It it kind of runs as a service in Linux, right? Yeah. Like you run it as a service in that particular server. So it's very important to realize how that service is uh, managed and how you can basically start, stop, and and get the logs from it. Yeah. So this is the part of service management and startup management is more on the DevOps side, right? Like when a Linux server is starting up, how can you make it quicker? How can you execute stuff? How can you make sure that a lot of services are bind it to the startup process during uh, during startup mm -hmm. right so this is what i mean by the startup management side of things here so again like these four are the basics of os and these two are specific to other sre side of things it's okay right so now coming to the most important topic here which is cloud providers right so for cloud providers what i'd recommend is like especially for people who are getting started in aws Right, which I was when I was moving from target to moving edge, for mm. getting started in AWS. Right, so for me, what helped a lot is the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Okay, so this is one of so SRE is one of the fields, or SRE or DevOps is one of the fields where these certificates are still very valid. Mm. Yeah. So you have a Cloud Practitioner, and then you have Solutions Architect, and you have Solutions Architect Associate, and uh, Solutions Architect Professional. Okay, mm. so there are levels to these, right? And then what you can do is like you can start preparing for one of these exams. And for for uh, like someone who's just getting started into it, it cloud practitioner practitioner is the first exam which you should do, right? Mm. So to 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 crack this particular uh, interview right? uh, or like this particular uh, test, what what you would require is a timeline of roughly three to four weeks max. Okay, mm. and and these are the four fundamental topics which you would need to cover. Okay, so I'll just give a brief. Okay, so IAM is the management of users in AWS. Like basically, because each and every server needs to have a particular role assigned to it, right? So that it it doesn't go haywire and access all the servers in your cluster. So I am managing those roles and also managing how we as an outside uh, uh, like how a person interacts with uh, aws okay so iem is that part ec2 is the server management so ec2 is the primary server so this would involve the actual uh, linux running instances in the uh, aws cloud mm -hmm. network is basically how the ec2 instances which i mentioned here talk to each other mm -hmm. and how they are managed and how clusters are formed so and, and the last part is s3 so S3 is, as I think you might also know, is an object storage, right? So what I mean by that is that this is the this is the primary data dump for most of the uh, stuff that you are storing. So for example, if you are on LinkedIn and LinkedIn asks for your profile picture, right? LinkedIn would probably store that profile picture in an S3 bucket, mm -hmm. right? And then this is where like huge chunks of data is maintained, and 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 also one addition to S3 is like they kind of use it for serving uh, uh, front end as well. So you can deploy stuff to S3 and use this as a, uh, uh, a server for the front end. Mm. So these are the four parts, which I guess you uh, like it's a, it's a good starting point for knowing AWS, right? And and once you are completely like deep into the AWS networking system or like AWS cloud practitioner, 
you can go ahead for the solutions uh, architect uh, okay so yeah like like we covered the most important part the other two parts like the container part and the tools uh, like the tool section what what we do is keep for the containers this is a huge concept on its on its own right so if if you see here so the most important thing which i learned in target is something which comes at a level 2 here right mm. containers container orchestration and then kubernetes right so basically kubernetes in itself is such a big field that even if you know kubernetes okay, you might get hired as an sre okay so okay. be frank because because this is the entire stack which most of the companies are working on right now this is their entire uh, uh, container management system so so basically i am i'm speaking a lot about containers without giving context of what a container is so uh, I'll, i'll just cover a little bit of what uh, what i mean by a container okay so a container is something like a virtual process which runs on a linux server for you in this case okay so this is this is a a, a virtual uh, image which which is run by docker as the container engine okay mm -hmm. so docker is a engine which you can learn it, uh, learn into and then you create these micro uh, containers right and what you have to do is like in a particular server itself you can run multiple of these instances which was not possible till now so what what was happening is that for one server you dedicated to one application right and and now what has happened is that in one particular server or one particular machine you can have multiple of these or like multiple of small v, uh, vms inside of this right so that that is where the container orchestration comes in or or how to manage these containers there so kubernetes and docker swarm are like uh, uh, the the primary examples for it so uh, like currently most of the startups would be migrating towards kubernetes because it's extremely stable and open source and a project by google right so, so everyone would be going into the kubernetes and it's very well supported by the community so so if if you are uh, picking up container as a topic you can surely pick up kubernetes instead of docker swarm and this would be much more uh, beneficial in learning mm. right so you can cover uh, cover the basic concepts by learning docker and then go to container orchestration and learn kubernetes mm. if you uh, starting in the container section so yeah and and lastly the tool section right so if if you see the tool section like it might look a uh, heavy tree here but mm. primarily what i'll do is ki i'll i'll distribute it into three things okay so what uh, so basically the three things would be ci cd okay monitoring logging and infrastructure as a code okay mm -hmm. so ci cd is continuous integration continuous deployment and this is one of the key buzzwords which have like which has which has come up right so everyone keeps on saying ci cd and keeps on relating it to devops because that is what devops engineers were uh, like that is where the role started okay. like if you see that loop right the first okay. release right which was connecting okay. uh, okay. dev and ops so the release part is managed by the ci cd set of tools so okay. one of the most common tools here is jenkins right which most of the enterprise companies uh, use uh, so jenkins was primarily for servers before right like when you were having vms instead of containers that is when uh, jenkins wa was in use but recently a lot of argo cd has been up, coming up which is for managing containers or deploying containers uh, mm -hmm. or or pods in kubernetes and similarly circle ci is a good ci tool right so ci is basically building stuff uh, like building your code into a container image and then the cd part would be getting that container image deployed to a server if mm -hmm. it, Uh, uh so ci is a uh, so ci is a good uh, uh, continuous uh, integration engine if you want to uh, get into it and then you can so so here what you can do is like you can pick any one of these i suggest learning one ci tool and one uh, cd tool so mm -hmm. what you can do is you can do circle ci as a ci you can have github actions as a ci right you can just keep on adding to this if you want like there is github actions uh there is git git lab so so there are like tons of software here uh, which which uh, a lot of companies would adopt so this is very fairly easy to get into right mm -hmm. like it would hard take you a week to to like uh, gain 
a good enough expertise in okay so yeah like you can pick up any of the ci tools and then do one of the cd tools uh similarly when we come into the monitoring side of things so so monitoring logging would involve three primary components this is logging which is basically uh, how you manage uh, uh, application logs right like how how do you see application logs how do you manage it how do you trace it and then there is infrastructure monitoring which is like how your servers are performing right like if a server is down or not and then there is application monitoring which says that if the server is up is the application down in that server right mm. out like that so for this like i have i have i have written down the primary tools here right so again like you can pick one of these if if you want to get into it right so logging may you can you can you can probably pick a uh, uh, data dog or elastic search i will uh, recommend people to learn elastic search here more because this is more generic mm. okay. similarly for infrastructure monitoring prometheus is something uh, like which is very much on the rise and if you know prometheus right this is almost in use in uh, like most of the enterprises and like almost almost 80 90% of the startups okay so and 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 in application monitoring again like yeager and new relic is something which has been up and coming you can also use datadog partly in this okay so what you can do is like you can pick up one of each but if you are only going to pick up one i'll suggest to pick up prometheus because it covers a up a lot of use cases and yeah. it is more closely tied to the infrastructure side of things right which is expected from an uh, from an srd role yeah. so, and and the uh, yeah so that that i think covers up the monitoring logging part and then the last part is infrastructure as a code so this is something which is which has been coming up right this is something which was not common about 2 2 3 years back but this is not the non uh, in in uh, sre so here you have a very good option in terraform okay. and then there is a new competitor of uh, called plumi coming up which is for uh, competing against terraform by indirectly using terraform to deploy infrastructure as a code so again like if you wanted to pick one go ahead with terraform okay and and you can probably uh, 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 like like be done with part so out of the out of the tree which i covered here right mm. so what i just wanted to mention is that it might look like a lot of topics right mm. which i covered okay but but the good thing about sre is that even even if you are good at one of the one of these right mm. you get a very good advantage in the interviews right mm. so like if you if you say in your resume that you are very good at terraform okay your interview would kind of uh move towards the terraform direction because people are uh, or like companies are in need for solution for all of these right mm. so people uh, like the companies would be hiring a separate terraform engineer on its own a separate mm. monitoring stack owner on its own right mm. and similarly a, a architect guy would would look into cloud containers by by themselves so even mm. if you are good or like extremely good at one of each uh, one of them right and like are just uh, covering all the topics here so you have a very good chance of get uh, of bagging an sre role okay mm. so yeah like i guess for when you say that like so this is a quite sort of if you see the mind map from a third person perspective it's quite sort of overwhelming right that there are so many things and also when you are explaining each of those you are saying that you have probably have choices of taking up either this or that right okay. so initially you mentioned that it is more about breadth in sre right rather than going into depth of that and also other aspect that you mentioned was that doing one of those mm. uh, might prove to be very beneficial leading the interview to that direction okay. so uh, does it like to summarize does it mean that you have to have sort of basic understanding in mm. terms of breadth across different things and mm. probably an expertise in one or two areas mm. out of these sections that you would like to expect in a candidate or something mm. so so see like uh, when when i am talking about breadth right so when i talk about breadth it is mostly for a junior role mm. right because in a junior role i can't expect you to have depth in a tool which is like for 2 years old 2 or 3 years old 
right like for example kubernetes has matured recently prometheus has matured recently i can't expect someone to have a in depth knowledge of these tools mm-hmm. right but what you can do is like you can get a idea of of uh, of the stuff which are there or which you might be working on so mm-hmm. for a junior candidate i'll definitely recommend that you know what all of these does right like all what particular uh, a thing here means at mm-hmm. least right mm-hmm. like you have a basic understanding of where it's used and then how how it's used right mm-hmm. so so that is what i recommend for junior sre roles for senior sre roles what what you would see is ki you you would mostly be knowing all of these right mm-hmm. and and then what happens is that you want to solve a particular problem for a company right mm-hmm. so that that is when you realize that you need to develop a dre- uh, depth in one of these so for me uh, like uh, uh, in in moengage it was prometheus right for for in in uh, skyflow it was Terra, terraform right mm-hmm. and like similarly in uh, target it was kubernetes mm-hmm. okay. so uh, so so yeah like even if you know all of uh, all of these you would mostly be working on a se- section and develop uh, a depth of one of these topics right mm-hmm. it's it's always beneficial to uh, know uh, these sections because it will also help you make decisions understood, understood. that's a good segregation i would say that yeah. it gives clarity of how someone should approach uh, their preparation